Hey everybody, I'm Jason Benton. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be comparing three of the most prominent parallel guide systems out on the market, and that is the Seneca Woodworking, Woodpeckers, and TSO products. In this video, I'll be covering topics like compatibility, similarities between them, and then just doing a little bit more of a detailed overview of each individual set of parallel guides. And then I'll close it out by talking about my experience, uh, my personal thoughts on each of them, and which ones might be best for which people. You might be watching this video wondering what parallel guides actually do. Well, parallel guides are designed to give you repeatability and accuracy if you're making multiple rip cuts that you need to be the same width. And the way that these operate is the head here attaches to the track, one on each end typically, and then you have a stop here. And that stop can be set to whatever measurement you want once these are calibrated, and then these stops set on each one reference off of the edge in which you want to reference from. Then that allows you to make repeatable cuts over and over again without having to measure every time. So what would be a really good example of where these would come in very handy? Let's say that you're building 10 cabinet boxes and all 10 of those cabinet boxes have the same side panel depth and you have eight sheets of plywood and you know that you're gonna be cutting seven of those to be the depth of the cabinet. Well, instead of measuring every time, that's where something like this comes in really handy because you can measure your first set, make sure the cut's good, and then you can just keep taking your track and using these every time to ensure that you get repeatable, accurate cuts every single time. So as I said before, I'm gonna be talking about the Seneca, Woodpeckers, and TSO, and we'll just get started with the compatibility of each one of these. All of these are compatible with Festool, Makita and Triton. Now the Woodpeckers and TSO do come ready out of the box, so to speak, uh, ready to be used with all of those. I do believe that the Seneca woodworking ones uh, do have something different about the head for the Triton. However, they do offer it in all of those. Now, inevitably, I know that I will be asked, are they compatible with Bosch or Craig or Grizzly or whoever else out there makes a track saw? And the answer is, I don't know. I'm going off of what is listed on their website, and those are the three that are listed on their website. If you are watching this and you have any experience with any of these systems on different platforms than I just mentioned, please leave it down in the comment section below because that will be very helpful to other people. All right, so now let's get into some of the similarities between each of these. Some of these things I'm not actually gonna show, um, you know, how you go about doing them. That's really not the point of this video. However, there are some similarities between them. They are all constructed of aluminum in some way, shape, or form. They have some steel pieces, but for the most part, they are all aluminum, some sort of T-track design, a head, and some sort of stop system. The next thing that they all have in common is they all do have a narrow rip setup somehow. The TSO and Woodpeckers operate off of a steel uh, rod that slides underneath the track, and the Seneca Woodworking has an attachment that goes under in this channel right here, and also goes underneath the track, allowing you to make thin rips on stuff that may not be as wide as the track, or let's just say maybe you need to make a two inch cut. Well, you can still do that with those thin stock guides, they just go underneath and then that now becomes your reference for your measurements. So you're not limited to cutting the material, the thickness of the rail. And the other thing that I wanna cover is each one of these does have a metric or an imperial version. And I'll talk more about that when I start discussing each one of these individually. All right, so the first one that we're gonna discuss uh, individually is going to be the Seneca Woodworking Parallel Guides. These are the guides that I've had in my shop the longest uh, and they've worked very well for a very long amount of time. This set right here uh, is going to be the most basic form of these parallel guides of the three that I'm going to show you. And I don't mean that in a negative way. What I mean by that is what you see is what you get, right? There's not really a lot of special features or anything like that about it. It is a head, it is a stop, and it is a piece of T-track. But what I really like about these Seneca guides is the fact that they used a very readily accessible material, and that is the Incra track. And so you can actually go to like any Woodcraft, any Rockler, and really pick up this in pretty much any length up to 48 inches that you want. And it's very customizable because again, it's aluminum and you can cut it on your miter saw and make whatever length rails you would like up to 48 inches. And they may even have longer options, I don't know. And the next thing about the Inca Track is that they use the Lexan scales. And the Lexan scales are kind of like a love-hate relationship for me. I think they're great. They're very easy to... 
uh, use and manipulate. And they're pretty readily available as well. You can order them from the Inker site. They don't cost hardly anything. You can buy them in metric or imperial, so you can change out as needed. Um, however, the only downside to that for me personally is that I have found that they do have a tendency to move, which can throw off your measurements without you knowing about it. Um, so I, I guess the simple solution with these ones is you can take, and I have done this in the past, a little dab of, let's say, CA glue or something like that, really to hold it in place once you get it zeroed. Uh, because I have had a time or two where I've gone to use these, I've made the cut because I didn't you know, check to make sure it was still good, and come to find out that it wasn't, and I had to readjust everything um, because my base you know, reference was off because it had moved. Um, simple solution glue it in place, but then you don't have the flexibility of being able to change them out so easy. These attach to the rail very easily. Uh, you'll see these uh, nuts that you have right here, and they just slide onto the rail, and it's really a very quick, easy, fast, secure connection. And then on the top side, there is a set of Allen screws, and you just have to use some sort of Allen wrench. I have seen people modify this to use some star-style knobs, and that can uh, work and make it a toolless operation, However, depending on the track saw that you're using, it could uh, impede full depth cuts, and I'll talk about that more when I get to the TSO products. As for the stop, same style feature. It is just a star knob. Uh, it slides back and forth very easily using the same nut, and taking the head on and off of the track is also operated in the same manner. So number two that we're gonna talk about is the Woodpecker's Parallel Guides. These definitely have some more features that the Seneca does not, and you're gonna see a lot of similarities between the Woodpecker's and the TSO. So like any other Parallel Guide, these ones attach in a similar uh, manner as the Seneca, as they do have a piece that actually goes in the slot on the track, um, and this actually extends further than the head unit itself. Now there are a couple things that I don't love about this design. And the first one is that I need two different tools to adjust and make sure that this is set. Now, in all fairness, once this bar is set, and I'll talk about that here in a minute, typically speaking, you're not gonna have to mess with it too much. However, there's some Allen set screws right here. And what this does is you'll see on the back, it actually has these spacers. And what this allows is for this to get tight into that track and takes up any slack. And then you're able to attach the head to that by tightening this down. Anytime you have set screws like that, especially ones that go all the way through, they do have a tendency to become loose. So you do have to adjust these uh, more often. But I have found that it does give a very good tight fit. But then going back to the other part that I was telling you about with this, you have to have the Allen wrench, and then you also have to have a Phillips head screwdriver because it uses two separate systems. Personally, I would have loved to have seen the same thing on both. That way I don't have to have two tools to use this tool. However, once you get it all set up, uh, it is very good, very sturdy connection, and it's great. Another thing that you're gonna notice that's different about the woodpeckers is the fact that it does come with two stops. And now that is not just because they wanna send you extra stops, it's actually for a reason. Earlier I had mentioned the narrow rip guide uh, that comes with this. It is actually a metal rod that goes through the holes located on this stop, and this is how it holds it in place. So that's the first thing that's great about it. The second thing that's really beneficial about it is, let's say that you were making a couple of different width cuts, and you needed to reference two things back and forth. So let's say you needed one to be 15 inches, and you needed another one to be 22 inches. Well, what you could do is set the front one's to 15 and the back one's to 22, and continuously flip between those, and it gives you very, very quick, accurate cuts. So having a second set of stops does come in handy from time to time. Okay, so a couple of things about the flip stops on the woodpeckers. Uh, first, they're a little bit big and bulky, probably bigger than they need to be, but they work very well. They do what they're supposed to do very well. But one thing that I look at when I'm looking down at it, if, they, if the flip stop is in the down position like you see here, I do get a little bit of a parallax uh, feeling when I'm looking at it because it's not touching it. So I don't know if it's exactly on. So what I like to do is actually flip it up to where now it is touching the scale. And then I can easily reference where I need to go, tighten it down, and we're good to go. Another thing about the scale actually is that this is the metric version. So you, you have to either get metric or imperial. It's one or the other, it's not both. And so as I'm looking down at it, it's just like everything else uh, and what you would expect from woodpeckers. And it is laser engraved and it's very easy to read, uh, very clear. 
So that's one other thing that's very nice about it. Now, another thing that is really nice about it, uh, again, I, I think it's kind of like a, a positive and a negative, and I'm gonna explain that just a little bit more. So notice how this one is much shorter than this one, right? This only has one stop on it, this has two. Well, this is the same setup. This is just one that has two pieces. This is one that has one. So what they have done is they have taken multiple pieces of their aluminum material, their T-Track material, and they've made it to where you can create different lengths based on your needs. And I really like that because sometimes I do like to just use a short one like this because I don't have to make a really wide cut. And why that's beneficial is because if I have a bunch of extra stuff hanging off of the track, it just is one more thing that I have to combat while I'm making the cut. So having the ability to go with a shorter version is nice. Now let's flip that around and talk about why uh, it can present a little bit of problems. It's great to have all of those pieces to have the adjustability, but with more pieces comes a lot more parts. And so as you can see here, I have the sustainer, and I'll talk about this more in the cost, but there's multiple different pieces that you have to manage and keep track of. Um, and so having the sustainer is a really good thing, but there are a lot of different pieces. But one thing that's great about these is that you have the full capacity, anything from a small cut all the way up to a 50 plus inch cut should you need to, and where that would come in handy is if you needed to, you know, cut a four by eight sheet of plywood in half, um, you can do that, or even slightly over half, you can do that uh, with these guides. But you don't always have to have the really, really long uh, pieces on. You can adjust it as necessary. But just understand that there are a lot of parts that come with that. And third, we have the TSO products parallel guides. And right off the bat, you'll notice that there's something different about these. These are much more low profile. And that is because they don't use a standard T-Track. They use their own design, which does have a T-Track slot in it, as you can see here, because it has to have something that the flip stop can slide in. But it is a much more lower profile than the others. And it actually is the lightest of the three. Again, this is very similar in the fact that you have a head that attaches to the track and you have a flip stop. But there are some very key differences between this and the other two. The first one is that this does come with a metric and imperial engraved scale. So you don't have to choose one or the other. This comes with both, which to me, I primarily use metric, but I still do use imperial from time to time. So having the ability to have both is a huge plus for me. The next thing is that the assembly of these is totally toolless because of these star knobs. So this connects just with these two star knobs and you can take it on and take it off. And I'm going to talk more about that here in just a moment. And then finally, you have the flip stop. This flip stop is different from the woodpeckers, and it is far different from the stop that is on the Seneca. There's a couple of things that I really like about this flip stop. One, the size. Two, the adjustability that you have in this piece right here. Three, anything you need a tool for is all controlled uh, with this one little wrench that they send with it. So everything is the same size, regardless of what you're adjusting, it's this size. But the best thing about it is, look, I want you to notice I've just loosened that, okay? It still doesn't move because it's spring loaded. And to me, that is awesome. Like that is one of the coolest features about this because I'm able to go to whatever distance that I need. I let go of it. I know it's not gonna move. And then I can go ahead and tighten it down. So a very small feature, but a very good feature. Like the others, very, very easy to see the measurements. Um, but overall, really nice piece. Now, I do want to talk about one thing that's slightly different. So this piece right here is going to slide onto the track just like any other system, and you tighten it down with these Allen screws. They also offer a Festool only version, which you can use toolless and not have to tighten anything down. This simply goes directly over the track and it makes taking it on and off very easy, very fast. For me, this is my preferred technique of doing it because I can just take my tracks on and off really quick. One of the downsides that I've always found with using parallel guides is, you know, do I really wanna to go to the trouble for making like two or three cuts of sliding these things on, getting the tool out, tightening it down, moving it off to the side, taking it off, where do I put my track, you know, when I'm not, using it? Do, do I have to take the, the parallel guides off because I don't want the thing to tip over? It just adds something to it. Well, with these, I'll use it for one cut because I literally can just take this, plop it right on. It works great. And when I'm done, I just pull it right off. So that's a really nice feature that I would love to see. And I think other companies should do that. Um, but that makes this for me uh, the, the definite choice every time I'm going to use this. 
And so finally, one of the other features of the TSO is that if you already have their um, guide rail squares, which I actually did a video comparison comparing uh, multiple different guide rail squares, much like this video, and I'll leave that up in the corner now if you guys want to go check that out. But these are compatible and designed to be used with these. I'll talk about this more when I get into cost because you'll start to notice you can change out different things to attach it to the rail. You don't have to have these to attach it to the rail if you have these. But this also gives you another benefit, and that is ensuring your material is square when you're getting ready to make your cut, as well as give you a distance. And so if I was going to attach this, this is going to slide onto the rail like so. I'm going to lock it on. And now I can reference this edge on the square and also get my cut length with this. So it kind of does two things at the same time, which is really cool. And I actually know you can use these on both sides. So they have two different uh, guide rail squares, and these are designed to be used with both simultaneously, um, which I don't have the other one, so I can't show that. But they've got some good resources on their website if you want to check that out. So again, this is just one more thing uh, that you can do with this system uh, as opposed to some of the other parallel guide systems. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get into the costs associated with each one. This is going to be your least expensive option. And right now, uh, at the time of shooting this video, it's like 22% off on their website. I think it's $225. Uh, and then normally it's like $290. And what you're looking at is what you get. They do have options in terms of the length of um, T-Track that you want. That could adjust the cost, but I'm pretty sure that this is just the basic setup. Uh, and like I said, right now, $225 and this is what you'll get, only you'll get two of them, not just this one. And so next for the woodpeckers, which is the most expensive option, uh, regardless of what configuration you go with, but they do have two options. You can get it with the sustainer, and that comes in at like $479, $480, and then you can get it without the sustainer, which comes in at $400. And I wanted to highlight the sustainer portion again, because if it was me, my recommendation is if you're gonna buy it, spend the additional $80 and get it with the sustainer, because it it does have the foam in it. It does keep everything nice and together. And there are a lot of pieces and a lot of parts. And it, it's nice to have that off to the side to house all of those parts. And finally, the TSO. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of different price points. But the reality of it is with the TSO is you can actually go on their website and you can customize it however you want and buy all the pieces individually to make what works best for you. But I'm going to talk to you about two of the most common configurations. And the first one is the one that I have, which is the 3050. What comes with that is two of the 30 inch rails, two of the 50 inch rails, two of the flip stops, and then your narrow stock uh, guides, right? What it doesn't come with is the heads that attaches to the track. And the reason that is, is because there's multiple different ways that you can go about that. So the price of the 3050 set comes in right about $290. So from there, you're going to decide whether you want the traditional style heads or you want the style that's designed specifically for Festool, where you could use Toolless. But you can also use this the same way as this. I've just taken it off because I don't need it. Now, the cost for these heads is about 40 bucks a piece. So add about another $80, and you're looking at about $370 for the 3050 set. Now, the other option is you could just go with the 30 inch rails, which those come in for about 180 bucks and they come with the stops, but then you have to buy the heads. So now you're talking about another $80. So you're looking at about 270 bucks and you'll have in terms of size and capacity, what is pretty standard with the Seneca. And then to go even further on that, they do offer 20 inch rails. So they offer 20, 30 and 50. Um, and then you could buy the flip stops and you can kind of do everything a la carte if you want. And then also, if you already own the squares, you don't need to buy any other ones at all. Um, although I would recommend that unless you want to be, you know, using this, obviously it's going to make it heavier and more cumbersome. Um, but you don't have to, right? So because they're designed to work with these. So there's a lot of options and um, unique configurations that you can do with the TSO. So most expensive woodpeckers, least expensive Seneca, and in the middle, depending on what kind of, you know, configuration you end up going for, you have the TSO product. Okay, so to close this video out, I'm going to just kind of kind of talk about my impressions based off my experience uh, of using all three of these for quite some time now. And I want to make it clear, I would recommend any of these, all three of them. They all three do a very good job 
at what they're designed to do. I've had really good success with all of them. For me, however, moving forward, uh, I will definitely be using the TSO products exclusively. There's too many reasons that um, are kind of deal breakers for me on why the TSO products is better. And to recap some of those uh, is the weight. I like the low profile. I think they by far have the best stop system out of all of them. Um, the fact that almost everything is toolless, the fact that I can attach these to my rail and have it be toolless makes me want to use them even more. And then on top of that, the fact that I can use them uh, with my guide rail square, it, it's just a much more intuitive, much more uh, robust system. Um, and again, you can, you can really customize this to however you want on their website. And so uh, I just think that there's the most options. And also it's not the most expensive. It's also not the cheapest. Um, so when it comes down to money for me, a hundred percent, I'm going to go with the TSO products because their, their products are really, really nice. And I have a lot of experience with them and I like them and I know what I'm getting. Same thing applies with woodpeckers. Same thing applies with the Seneca. They're all very well made. Um, the quality is fantastic. I think with this stuff for you to make your own decision, it's really boils down to personal preference. Um, for me, those reasons are why I like it the most. Um, but if you're somebody that's a huge Woodpeckers fan um, and you love the quality of their tools, you're not going to be disappointed by that. Um, if you're somebody that uses Seneca products and you like the quality of their tools, you're not going to be disappointed in it. So I think the two that are a little bit closer in terms of cost, obviously, is the TSO and the Woodpeckers. Um, the Seneca is a less expensive option and it does have the least amount of features. It is a very basic uh, set. And that's fine. If it was on sale, like it is right now, I would say that that's a really good budget friendly option. However, if it wasn't on sale, I would be very hard pressed to purchase those over the 30 inch rail set here, uh, with the heads, because it would actually be, uh, about the same price, maybe even a little bit cheaper to do that. And I just think that the the TSO system is just a better product. So hopefully you guys found that information helpful. Uh, and you know, seeing what some of the features are helps you make a decision of whatever it is uh, that maybe you want to go with in the future. And I will leave some affiliate links down to the stuff below. If you guys use them, awesome. If not, <laughs> it is what it is. You can go to the website. There's plenty of websites that have this stuff available. Uh, but just know that if you guys are using the affiliate links, I always greatly appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. Uh, as always, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you guys have questions or comments, uh, or if you like this style of video, let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, I'd be happy to do some other videos like this and also answer any questions that you may have. Also, you can go over to Instagram and find me there at Bents Woodworking uh, and you can send me a DM or you can go over to my website, bentswoodworking.com uh, and see everything else that I'm doing and also ask me questions there as well. So thank you for watching. Until next time, everybody get out in the shop, try something new and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.